for our community members and that we make sure that our fam knows that they are supported. And that is why we are here. We want the Wallace family to know that we are not going to forget what happened to them and what the state did to Walt. That's why we are here. This is not a protest. This is the community coming together to show love and support. I'm here with my comrade and friend, Crystal Strong. Y'all say hi. <laughs> What's going on, y'all? I call her my movement wife. <laughs> the Wallace family is here. Give it up for the Wallace family. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Let's show some love to the family of Walter Wallace Jr. We love you. We are here for you. We want you to feel that love in this moment. We have snacks provided over here by Food Not Bomb Solidarity. We also have groceries. We have a lot of groceries for people to take home. Good groceries, okay? And these groceries were provided by multiple organizations who wanted to show up for the Wallace family. We got we have produce, there's actually grab and go meals over there, so like hot dogs and breakfast sandwiches and things like that. There's a range, so we please, please people go and check out the food, get yourself some grub. Food is freedom. Then we also have so many clothes over there. So we also want people to make sure that you come over there and see what clothes over there will fit you or the people that you know and take some clothes with you. All of this we are doing in honor of Walter Wallace Jr. And then we also have books that are being gifted through liberation, through reading. 150 books for children. So if there are children here, if you have any children, if you know any children, these books are free. Everything here is, all of those things that we're talking about are free. We do have some merchandise that is for sale. That merchandise is raising funds for Mumia Abu-Jamal and our campaign to bring him home. You can find that merchandise over here. All right, we're going to get ready. We're going to start with libations. Brother Gabe is going to do libations. Peace, family. How y'all feeling? Peace, how y'all feeling? You know, we start any program, event, activity, as we've been doing for thousands of years. As a people, we've always acknowledged the ancestors, those who came before us, and those whose shoulders we stand on. And it is in that spirit, it is only fitting that we're doing it right here at the illustrious Malcolm X Park. And we cannot name Malcolm X without naming his beautiful wife and partner, Dr. Betty Shabazz, as well. We're here today to recognize Walter Wallace and the Maroon family. And so we want us ourselves to breathe we want ourselves to get our minds right. And we want ourselves to think about all it's taken for us to be here today as a community and as a family. We're going to close each statement with the affirmation that we say Ashe. For those folks who are not familiar, Ashe comes from the Akan people and means let it be so or in agreement with. All right? We pour this water to acknowledge the original creator that goes by many names. That creator that is divine, that is righteous, that understands our journey and understands our purpose. With that, we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge the four cardinal directions of west, south, north, east. The African people have lived, died, persevered, struggled, 
work and thrive. With that, we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge all those ancient civilizations, those who created institutions, built sciences, built languages, and built the original family and nucleus of what was yet to come. With that, we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge all those who found themselves in the belly of a boat, those who were tricked, those who were deceived, those who found themselves across following these shores, not knowing what was yet to come for themselves or future generations. With that, we say Ashe. 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 We pour this water to acknowledge those who fought and started insurrection on those boats. And even those who sought freedom in the waters below, with that we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge all those who found themselves on foreign soil, built maroon colonies, to maintain our traditions and culture in the woods, in the hills, in the mountains, in the swamps, to maintain their tongue and their drum. With that, we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge all those who found themselves on plantations in the Americas and abroad, those who burnt crops, those who poisoned food, those who didn't do anything, and those who also understood that freedom was yet to come. With that, we say Ashe. 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 We pour this water to acknowledge all those who understood the value of underground railroads, making it up north and elsewhere, and more importantly, seeing freedom for their children and for their future. We also pour water for those who fought through Jim Crow, redlining, the Red Summer, and all the atrocities, even post-Civil War, with that we say Ashe. Ashe. We pour this water to acknowledge all those who fought in the Black Power Movement, Civil Rights Movement, and all movements up to now, so that we could be standing here today. With that, we say Ashe. 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 We pour this water for the unborn, those yet to come, those who will carry our fight to even greater heights. With that, we say Ashe. Ashe. And we pour this water for the wisdom and the counsel of our beautiful elders, seniors, those who provide us with insight and input in order to keep our struggle moving. With that, we say Ashe. 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 At this point, we would like to acknowledge all of those who are in your personal lineage, those who may have been part of your bloodline, who are not here today with us, but you want to bring right now into this space that give us strength, that give us comfort, and that give us clarity. I'll start by saying my grandma Mary. Ashe, call the names out. Leone. Ashe. 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 Uncle Butch. Uncle Tommy. Ashe. Those in your personal bloodline. Ashe. Ashe. And right now, we're going to acknowledge those who are in our collective experience, those leaders, those master teachers, those guides, those warriors, those soldiers, those healers, those freedom fighters, those teachers, those scholars, those farmers, those merchants, all those folks who are in our collective experience. You want to call them out right now? I'll start by saying Malcolm X, Ashe. Call him out, Ashe, call him out. Ashe, Ashe, Ida B. Wells, Ashe, 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 call me to Ray, Ashe, 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 Queen Mother Moore, Ashe. Ashe, Martha P. Johnson, Ashe, 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 
Assez. 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 Harriet Tubman again. Assez. Assez. With that being said, we'll close this out saying three times. Ashe, 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 and Ashe, yo. Ashe. Thank you. Give thanks, Ashe, yo. All right, clap it up, clap it up. We have an incredible program for you this afternoon that is in celebration of the life of Walter Wallace Jr. That is in celebration of the life of Walter Wallace Jr that is in demanding the freedom of Russell Maroon Schultz and Mumia Abu-Jamal and all political prisoners. Clap it up if you're happy to be here with us this afternoon. All right, I'm gonna need a little bit more energy now. This is a celebration. This is a, a community convening, right? So I am excited to welcome to the stage a dear comrade and a freedom fighter in his own right, that is Robert Salim Holbrook. Welcome, Salim, to the stage. Peace, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Um, I did not know that I was going to be first up, so bear, bear, have a little patience with me. But, you know, I'm kind of exhausted. I remember when this rally yesterday's was being planned, as well as we were working on an official statement for the events that transpired last week, whether it was this joker, I don't even remember his name. I remember, I'd rather honor George Floyd's name than the, the joker that is on his way to prison for killing him. Personally, as an abolitionist, I've been asked a lot of questions about what is, what, what, is, what is our position or what is my position about what his punishment should look like being an abolitionist. And I struggled with that. Not, I didn't struggle with my response. Rather, I struggled with how, how to express my response, right, to some people because my abolitionist, my abolitionist position does not extend to agents of the state. I could really give two shits about how the state treats him, where his final destination is. I don't care. I care for his victims. I care for the people that right now are suffering from his actions. I care for people across the country who are suffering, families who are suffering from the actions of killer cops. So as an abolitionist, as a revolutionary abolitionist, my position is very clear. My abolition does not extend to agents of the state who kill our people. The connection between Walter Wallace and Russell Maroon Schultz. Russell Maroon Schultz, a lot of people know Russell Maroon Schultz as a member of the Black Liberation Army, the Black Panther Party. I know him as that. I also know him as a mentor. And many young men who came through the camps, the prison camps in Pennsylvania, as well as the federal prison camps, know him as a mentor to us. I think that a lot of times that's missed, right? Russell Maroon Schultz, Jojo Bowens, other members of the Black Liberation Army didn't have to teach myself and other, other younger prisoners coming through the penitentiaries anything about violence, anything about using guns. We already learned that from the state. We already learned that from the streets. So I can't sit here and tell you that Russell Maroon Schultz taught us anything about harming people. What Russell Maroon Schultz taught us was about dignity, about respect, about self-determination, about coming back to our communities and being builders, being healers, and not destroying the communities that we harmed before we went into the camps. But when it comes to the connection between Russell Maroon Schultz and Walter Wallace, 
Them being from Philadelphia is not just part of that connection. There is a direct connection between the imprisonment of Russell Maroon Schultz and political prisoners who were members of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Cro Army in Philadelphia and across the country. There is a direct line, there's a direct connection between what happened to Walter Wallace in his neighborhood and what happened to Russell Maroon Schultz in the late 60s and 70s. So I'm going to embark on a very brief history lesson because a lot of times we think everything that, go, that goes on happens in a vacuum, right? The Black Panthers and the Black Liberation Army. The reason the BLA came into an existence is because in 1968, J. Edgar Hoover identified the Black Panther Party as the single greatest threat to the internal security of the United States. At that time, the Panther Party were an armed self-defense organization that was primarily involved in community health clinics, feeding uh, the breakfast programs, clothing our people. It was complete community service programs. Huey P. Newton called them survival programs pending revolution. It was not an armed threat. But when J. Edgar Hoover directed that memo to all of the major cities in this country, he instructed the FBI to work in cooperation with law enforcement to destroy the Black Panther Party through assassination, neutralization, propaganda, imprisonment, false charges. Shortly after that memo, within less than a year, over 33 Panthers across the country were murdered. We know a lot about the Fred Hamptons, right? But for every Fred Hampton, there were 10 other brothers and sisters who are nameless today, but who were murdered by the police in false arrest, false actions, right? In addition to those 33, hundreds were imprisoned on false charges all across the country, and hundreds more had to go on the run because of these false charges. So. What we had was the government initiate a counterinsurgency, a war against the Black Panther Party that forced a segment within that party to go underground because they realized that the state is trying to kill us. In going underground, this was the nucleus of the Black Liberation Army. They were pushed underground and were forced to defend themselves. They didn't need to arm themselves because they already had the right to arm themselves. That's something we need to understand. We have the right to arm ourselves, right? So we, we was already armed. They was already armed. But more importantly, the thing that made them the threat was they were telling the police that, listen, we don't need you in our communities. We got this. That was what made them such a threat because they were able to reach the gangs. They were able to reach the element in the community that was causing violence, communicate with them, and bring them on the side of the people, right? So in Philly, Russell Maroon Schultz was a member of the Moon Gang. A lot of people here under the age of 40 probably don't even know what the Moon Gang was, right? But it was one of the biggest gangs out West Philly. Where I'm from, it was the Moroccos up in North Philly, the Valley. There, I mean, we could go all across the, the city. But, hold on, brother, but a lot of other, okay, he was from the coach, all right, okay, my man right here, uh, me and him did some time together, so that's one of my old heads, too, and that's just showing you how deep, though, the neighborhood connection was back then, that he's going to come in and correct me, right, but they had a sense of connection with their neighborhoods, right, it wasn't like today where it was just disorder, like the gangs was actually part of the very communities they were from and they were defending them. And that's what made them a threat. That's what made the Panther Party, the BLA, a threat because they were able to communicate with these forces within our community and then convince them to defend the community, right? So this is what made them a threat because they made the police obsolete and said, yo, these are no-go areas. We don't need you in these areas. They wanted to... They didn't want to police our communities, they wanted to secure them. Fast forward now to what happened to Walter Wallace, to what's happening to the city of Philadelphia. We have all these homicides today on pace for 600, right? Showing that the police can't listen. I don't care, how, I don't care if they hire 20,000 more police, they, not, they, they can't solve that problem. Only, only we can solve 
the problem of violence in our community. That's a fact. But what happened to Walter Wallace on his block is directly connected to the repression of the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army. Because had they not been repressed, had they been not destroyed, we would have been able to respond to Walter Wallace in our communities ourselves. We would be able to respond to a lot of intercommunal violence going on in the neighborhoods ourselves, right? And one thing I, I do want to make clear is that whatever response we would have to these problems in our community, we reserve the right to use whatever means necessary to respond to these problems in our community, right? But, because I don't want people to think here that like, to deal with this issue, it's just a matter we're just gonna go out there and talk to people because I've been there. It's gonna take more than talking in order to, for us to secure our communities, right? It's gonna take more than talking, just wanna make sure the elders are all right. It's gonna take more than talking, right? But had they not destroyed the BLA, Black Panther Party, right? We would have been able to respond to Walter Wallace ourselves. We would have been able to have the type of treatment, the type of intervention that we needed. So I just wanted to make that connection when we, we see these police responses, police killing us, right? When we see the violence in our neighborhoods, what does that have to do with political prisoners? Had, had the state not destroyed the movements that were securing our communities, we would not be having these problems today. Now, this is not for us to get disillusioned. This is for us to look back and see what they were doing, right? And for us to bring it back today. And it's also very important that when we talk about police, I don't care if you believe in reforming the police, which I don't believe in, defunding the police, which is okay, or abolition of police, which I support, right? You should center political prisoners in all of those conversations. Because those political prisoners Russell Maroon Soaps, Jojo Bowens, Mumia Abu-Jamal. They have been in prison for 50 years now for responding to this issue during their generation, right? So we should not leave them behind, all right? So I'm gonna wrap this up, but for those who are interested in supporting and becoming a part of a movement, I would encourage you to join Black Lives Matter, join the Human Rights Coalition, join the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, Join the Jericho Philadelphia chapter. Join movements that are actively right now struggling and fighting to bring our political prisoners home. Because I could assure you that the impact they had on us on the inside, they could have it out here on the outside. It's just that many of them are in their late 70s and the time is running out. So we really need to, 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 to kick things into high gear and into another level. Thank you for giving me the time to speak uh, today. Give it up for Salim, give it up. All right, we want to thank Salim for making it plain the connection between political prisoners and police murders of our community members like Walter Wallace Jr. I am excited to bring to the stage a member of our community that was invited by the family of Walter Wallace Jr. to speak, John McKay. Please join us at the mic. Clap it up, y'all. Clap it up. Thanks, Queen. Thanks, Queens and Kings. Thank you, Philadelphia. Thank, thank you, Queen Don Wallace, Jr. Sorry, I left the Jr. out. Let's just have a moment of silence for Walter Wallace, Jr. That's why we're here today. A moment of silence, please. All too often, we play with that. Thank you. I connected with the queen, you know, unfortunately through the loss of her husband through Instagram and responding and being a community member that I am. My name is Yan McKay. I'm the founder and president of Life Outside the Streets. Our mission is to treat trauma through arts, education, and information. And I, I connected with the king, Walter Wallace Jr., his wife through Instagram, you know, because that's where a lot of our community is at. And we've been supporting each other ever since. So it's an honor and a privilege to come up here and talk. One of the things, uh, she just asked me to come out, and, out here and share. And that's what I'm coming to do. However, I'm not sure if I ever really shared with her. But one of the things that 
you know, we did as an organization, Life Outside the Streets, was we create, we recognized that there was no formal education or document to teach us how to deal or prevent a mental health crisis. So we developed the infographic called How to Prepare for a Mental Health Emergency, right? And the great but sad thing about this is we have all the resources, but everybody just haven't, hasn't been informed. So one of the things that we do as an organization that we have been doing is organizing and developing the signage, the message that we need to treat trauma in our community to, to be safe. Because I'm 37 years old and when I grew up, there was all types of messages like be cool, stay in school, say no to drugs. There was positive messaging. There is absolutely none right now. And for this to be, a, this is, I mean, it hasn't been approved by the powers that be, they say, as a medical document. But I'm a student of behavioral health. I've been working in behavioral health inside the school building, inside the school district since 2015. I study this work and I'm a professional in the field. And I know that these steps to be true. But it's a shame that these, this, this doesn't exist until now. So we'll be creating more and more of this signage and information and getting it to the community. But this is what it says. How to prepare for a mental health emergency. If you suffer from severe and persistent mental illness, you must create a safety plan of action in case of an emergency. This safety plan should be created with the person who is ill, family members slash caregivers, and a guidance from a mental health professional. When a mental health emergency arises, please contact your local, local mental health crisis team. That's something else we got to talk about because we know that's not really a real thing right there, right? The crisis team. So we're working on creating that. But the number, first step one says write down all important numbers, right? Remember, we're preparing. So we got that. Step two, create a safe space. So, you know, creating a safe space in what they call, what we call a mental health crisis or a stressful situation and creating a safe space, it doesn't look like people getting out with guns and sticks and yelling at you and pointing at you and you sending threats to the individual. When you create a safe space, you know, the safety plan would include things that will bring up to help de-escalate a person. And only the, their loved ones that may be there on the scene or that know them would know those things. But whoever can get that. But there are some basic things that we know about creating a safe space. It's giving a person space. You understand? Creating a perimeter. You understand? Around a person without harming them, but backing everybody up. Not so that you have to arrest them, but so that they can feel safe. And let them know, hey, we're backing everybody up so that you can feel safe. So now you can develop a level of trust for that person. Even though they don't know you, they'll be like, all right, you here for me. They'll, now, if the, if the police or whoever comes up to show that they're there for that person, they will, what, cling to that person. But I think I don't have a whole lot of time. But the number one thing, I, I, the next thing it says, create a list of uh, comprehensive medications or activities that is helpful for that person. Step four says assess the problem. How do we get here? What triggered this situation? It doesn't matter who's right or wrong, what got us here so that we can help them know that that's okay. Let's move away from that. Let's, you know, let's, let's move forward and let's make them feel safe to save the time to be proven a point. And the next thing is execute the solution. So once you identify the solution without being aggressive to that person, then you can execute it because you have a plan. You've hopefully contacted somebody that can help you and, you know, and done it effectively. So I want to close out because the brother set a great stage for what is happening. So I came more today with more than an infographic. Life Outside the Streets is actively fundraising to provide safety and security in our own community. We believe that with security on every block, it's virtually impossible for a kid to get shot by a gun. It's impossible for somebody to get robbed. It's virtually impossible for even domestic violence to be happening. Because with security on every block, those that for various reasons don't have the resources to make, to deal with conflict in a peaceful way, will be forced to deal with it without violence. That's not gonna happen with a, with a, with a statement from me. It's not gonna happen through the school. It's gonna happen where there's security. So we're fundraising to provide not just security, 
security to create a space. This security will be packaged with the mediation and the de-escalation and everything that I talked about right here. So not only will we have security in the community, but we'll have de-escalators in the community on the block. And not only, and the reason people are a little challenged about how this may happen, just like I'm bringing it to you, we're bringing it to the community to get it done, to, 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 to introduce it. Therefore, everyone on the block will be trained on how to de-escalate. And as a block, we will identify who's effective at doing that and to de-escalate things while we have security. We have everything we need to move forward. These numbers right here are enough. They're enough. We got to commit to meeting, organizing, and executing. You know what we custom respectfully elders that are at Congress doing? That's what they do. They sit because it takes time to meet. We are very effective at identifying a problem. We are very effective at showing up in numbers when it is a, a problem that has been overdue to be checked, but needs to be checked. But we have to organize and execute. Commit to 90% of your meetings for the next 30 days being about action planning only. No discussions about the plans, only the actions, only the rallies, only the things that are happening. No more talking about the problem. Only organize and talk about the action and we'll be done. In 30 days, it'll be safe in Philadelphia. In 30 days, we got everything. If only the people here that's here met on the Zoom for the, for the next couple of weeks about the solution, the action, organizing this security and spreading the word to the community about this action plan and meeting about it. We can't put security on the block without the people. You understand? So meeting about it and, and starting the training for everything we want is free to start training. What the Black Panther Party did, and I'm closing because I know I've probably been up here too long, but what they did that, that why the government targeted them to shut down was because they was teaching. They just, they was teaching the people what they needed to know. We don't got to check with the school district. We don't got to complain with nobody about what we need to teach. All we got to do is teach them. We know what we need to teach them, and that's free to do. That's what we're doing over here in Life Outside the Streets. Long live Walter Wallace Jr. Call me for anything. I'll be right there. I'm sorry if I took too long. Let's clip it up for the brother John McKay. He says something very, very critical that I just want to repeat. He said, we have everything that we need already, right? We remain disorganized at our own detriment. We remain disorganized at our own peril. When we talk about abolish the police, redirecting the resources that the police consume and putting it into our community, it's because we understand that we are the ones that keep us safe so that we don't have to call the cops when a member of our community is in distress, when we have conflict within our community. And so we need to be organized. We need to join organizations. That is the only way that we will see an end to state violence in our community. Clap it up, y'all. Clap it up if that's making sense, y'all. All right, so obviously today is about getting us in formation, right? But again, this is also a celebration of the life of Walter Wallace Jr. So I am so excited to bring to the stage a comrade, an organizer in these streets, but also an incredible performer and artist, Black Rap Medusa. Peace and power. One of the things that uh, the brother was saying up here on the stage just a little bit ago, we talk about mental health, we talk about mental illness in the community. We don't think about as descendants of slaves of being, of, of suffering from post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. We call it post-traumatic slave disorder. It's when you have to really, like, a lot of the issues that we're dealing with today is, is, is passed on in our DNA. So did you know that the the... the the black woman passes her eggs on to the next womb. And that next womb carries on that same stress, that same trauma, passing that trauma on and on and on. And so we have to stop that, we have to stop that uh, generational curse with ourselves. We have to begin to interrogate ourselves around the issues that we are continuing to deal with that are long gone, right? These issues are long gone, so they say. We hundreds of years up from slavery, aren't we? 
We still dealing with the post-traumatic slave disorder. So I just want people to mellow, mellow on that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, today, I'm going to hit y'all with a little beat. You know what I'm saying? Yesterday, I did it a cappella. You know what I'm saying? I haven't rapped on this beat in a minute, so they're going to bear with me. But first and foremost, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get this rhyme out. Brother Gabe, who y'all seen, the comrade, the organizer in Philadelphia, busting it up, has dropped the album. I don't know if y'all check got a chance to check it out. You know what I'm saying? But we got a track on there together called Future. Um... And the brother's uh, uh, taking care of business today, so I'm not going to make him get on the stage with me. But um, I just wanted to spit this verse that kind of talks about this. Now, this is new. This is exclusive. You ain't going to see it unless you cop the album. You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all go cop that. The, what's the, what's the, uh, the album called? Restoration Project. And the song I'm talking about is Future. You know everything I earned, man, I still had to take. Took a quarter from an ounce, ounce to a pound cake. Seven up from a lemon, siblings eating dinner plates. Seven, six, nine, five, shorty on the interstate. Hundred ancestors with me, egg on talking, former slave. Well, do the math on an abacus, going back to Africa. Like a man deep in them subwetto passages. Rest in peace, George Jackson. Free my nigga Sing Sing, Muncie up to Attica. Liberate by any means, I don't care who attack us. My top shot out like a full metal jackers. Post-slave traumatic, every soul wood from the cradle to the casket. Them ain't just bars, spoken word and semantics. Blind CC facts that I'm passing, even if I'm speaking in passing. Still tell by the speech of my actions. Knowledge I speak reach masses. That ain't just deep, it's massive. Keeping my feet to the path of the prophet that didn't look backwards. Black rap greatest on the atlas. Black rap greatest on the atlas. Mic check, smashed it to pass it. There you go. Yeah. Go ahead, you can drop it. See what the system trying to do to the Wallace family and to every other family that's ever lost anybody to gun violence, police violence, mass incarceration. You kind of fuck with your karma, you feel me? Oh, yeah. Shit. Hey. Don't let them fuck with your karma, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Fuck with your karma. That system will fuck with your karma. Fuck with your karma. That system will fuck with your karma. Put a bullet hole right through your mama. Put a knife hole right through your windpipe. Don't fuck your armor. Look your honor. I don't need a judge to beat my piece. Uh -huh. All I need is love to be any. A girlfriend said she don't need no weed Cause she, cause she uh, Chakra poppin', show stoppin', jaw droppin' in the yoga pants Like a twerk and African dance Said black rap, you don't need no friends All you need is to understand, no overstand your protection man All you need is to understand your mission man Say, no pain, no pain get this out real quick. It's all the hood revolutionaries out there. He said, fuck around wrong side of town, leave your whole crew straight up murder. 
They don't care what y'all say straight right around with that burner. Way to turn up, way to turn up, way to turn up in here. Now take your shirt off in here and get the squabbing right here. I tried to leave it all behind, but seen it follow right there. I see my people catch a murder case. Then not much later be the murder case. They get the snitches, sleep with fishes, gay so vicious, even bitches, pyrex dishes, making wishes come true. But doctors pushing drugs too. It ain't no justice, just you. It ain't no hanging, just noose. When I'm Detroit Red, man, I kill a pig dead and come back for the pig that arrested me. My development arrested me. Get on child, what's next for me? Get on child, what's next? Thank y'all. Shout out to the Wallace family. Free Russell Maroon Schultz. Free Mumia. Free Matula Shakur. Free and Ma'am Jamil Alameen. Hands up, Asada. Give it up for the comrade Black Rap Medusa. One of the illest, most thoroughest MCs out there, but also an incredible organizer. Look up the Dignity Act PA. Clap it up, y'all, one more time from Black Rap Medusa. All right, coming next to the stage is someone who came here all the way from Rochester, New York. Rochester? Wow. So people far and wide understand the importance of freedom for Maroon Schultz, freedom for Mumia Abu-Jamal, and love and respect to the, the family of Walter Wallace Jr. So I'm bringing to the stage Raphael Outland, who is an activist and a youth advocate who has some words for us today. Clap it up, give him some love. Blessings, blessings, thank you all for having me here. Um, yeah, it was a six hour drive, so I'm grateful to be with all of you all, uh, revolutionary love. Uh, I want to give a shout out uh, to Jaleel Muntakim, uh, keep him home. He's um, a member of the Rochester community and um, we're glad to have him. Uh, peace and love to that brother. And uh, finally, what I want to say before I read this letter. Um, I've been asked to read an open letter I wrote to our comrade Mumia. Um, I want everybody here to remember that when them brothers are writing books, when they're doing interviews, when they're writing papers, it's very important lessons, messages, insights that they're trying to give us. And so outside of keeping up the struggle to keep them brothers free, sisters free, free them all, I hope that we all can do our best to try to live like those messages that those brothers are giving us. So um, I just want to read this piece and help everybody understand um, on some level the way uh, Mumia Abu-Jamal have influenced me. Open letter to U.S. political prisoner Mumia Abu-Jamal. Dear Mumia, I know we've never met, had a conversation or share the tea and conscious thought, yet you have remained an inspiration for me in more ways than I could ever imagine. Through your books, conscious talks on prison radio and interviews on YouTube, I've learned important lessons from you about the meaning of being black in the US and finding myself as a man in a country that devalues black life. When I first read your book, Live from Death Row, I felt the host of different emotions, including sadness, frustration, inspiration and hope. These emotions were evident as I read stories of your uh, perspectives towards the hell on earth and thousands of black, brown and white brothers and sisters who succumbed to the slow and painful death of the road. I read your words with grace, patience and overstanding, which helped me understand the depths of your insights, intellect and courage to write from the belly of the beast. Through this book, you gave voice to thousands of voiceless human beings who will rarely, if ever, get the chance to speak their truth about living behind bars. Thank you. Brother Mumia, thank you for crafting a seminar work writing on the wall. Before reading this book, I found it challenging to connect global oppression of people and our continued struggles against it. This, this text highlighted important and timely discourse 
from police terrorism of black folks in the U.S. to the liberation struggles of Palestinians against occupying Israeli forces in Palestine. Your words echo those of Chairman Fred when he states that the time is now for an international proletary revolution in order to rid ourselves of oppression and the oppressors once and for all. On the move. Your guides and insights of how to resist oppression are critical, which you lay the groundwork in your book, We Want Freedom. This chronicle of your experiences in the Black Panther Party was an important history lesson for me. Specifically, I value your focus on the benefits of the BPP programs for the people rather than overly focusing on the importance of self-defense. If I am correct, I am unsure of any political organization, especially those forged from grassroots, for example, Bobby and Huey, that were as comprehensive, committed, and consistent service providers for the people as the BPP. I also value your stance against sexism and misogyny in the BPP. Limited male authors about the Panthers highlighted women's contribution to the movement the way that you did. I felt so proud of our sisters after my read, primarily regarding their devotion, tender love, and strength provided to the youth and the movement. The truth is that women were the backbone of the Panthers, and I remain grateful for your acknowledgement of their important contributions. Most people in the U.S. and the world know that your case was a complete frame-up. We all know that Adolf J. Edgar Hoover and the fastest counterintelligence program were entrapping and neutralizing black leaders as early as the Honorable Marcus Garvey and the Black Star Line to the Black Panther Party and the MOVE organization. From Judge Albert Sabo to D.A. Larry Krasner, I struggle to understand why they want to see you die in prison with all of the old and new evidence of your case that is unquestionably proves your innocence. Why are they afraid to grant you a new trial or grant your compassionate yet immediate release with your current health battles with COVID-19, congestive heart failure, dermatology concerns, and recent heart surgery? The hell on earth only exacerbated these illnesses. Thus, we have to get you out, brother. In closing, just want you to know that you are my hero, teacher, mentor, and comrade. We need more leaders like you who are willing to speak truth to power. Young and old folks, black, brown, red, yellow, and white are coming together to strategize your overdue release. We remain diligent, faithful, and committed that you will soon be set free. Hang in there, brother, and know that we are thinking of you, we love you, and await your return to your beloved family and community. On the move, long live John Africa. Long live John Africa. Thank you, brother. Thank you. So, of course, there have been times there have been times when, um, you know, that certain members of the Wallace family um, were standing around press with the lawyer, talking to the news. This is the time, this is the moment when the Wallace family wanted to speak to the community. And so we're going to hear from the Wallace family now, and we're going to start. First, I want to make sure you all know that this is actually Walt standing here. And these images here, because his head is down, so just in case you didn't realize, this is Walt here, standing here with his Black Lives Matter, his fist up. And then, I don't know if you also know, but Walt also was a musician, and he made a song that spoke about the movement and what's happening in our, to our people. He wrote a song that was protesting against the violence against our community. How crazy is that? We are going to play that video a little later. But in this moment, we are going to hear from his wife, my new friend and sister, Dominique. Please give, come on now. Come on now. Come on and give her that energy. Come on. Give her the energy. Come on. Come on. Long live Walt 
Walter Wallace. Long live Walter Wallace. Oh, I want to thank Miss Janae because she came up with this idea like around like January, and I was so skeptical about doing it because I didn't, I wasn't in the right state of mind. I I didn't want to live in Philadelphia, like I still don't, but. I'm like, I still I want to do something to the for the community. And because Walt always did for everybody he ever came across. So today is like this is all I got left of my husband is these images and my children. And today I just want to just celebrate his life because no, he didn't sacrifice his life, but when he was here, he was sacrificing his life for everybody around him. So this was just like since October 26, Miss Shane and Aaron, like a lot of people I don't even know, just been here for me since October 26, and I'm so grateful for everything, everybody, the prayers, people sending food, clothes, anything. Like just this is just a day of gratitude and appreciation for everybody. Like people come from not just Philadelphia, people come from New York, everywhere. Like, and I didn't even know a lot of people knew about this. And I'm so grateful that it, it was like y'all made it y'all business to come out here. We love you, Don. We're going to hear now from Walt's dad, also Walter Wallace Jr. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank everybody who came out to support me and my family. I really do. I'm really honored. I really do. But I'd like to say from the bottom of my heart, um, we got a lot of unpaid justice and all kinds of political situations we got to bear. So the only challenge we're going to bear when we stand together as all. You know what I mean? Don't look at one, look at all. All for all of us. You know what I mean? Because all of us deserve opportunity and opportunity for all of us, not for one race of people, for all of us. You know what I mean? And we got some unfit people in, uh, in government agencies supposed to do for us, and they's not doing for nothing. And, and from the bottom of my heart, they consider unfit people, you know what I mean? Because they, they, they can talk, they can talk to talk, they can't walk, you know what I mean? And once, once they get to some kind of common decency for all of us, you know what I mean? Just don't look at, at, at us as, you know, we, we human beings, that's all we are, you know what I mean? And we deserve to live just like everybody else, you know what I mean? And thank y'all, everybody. Appreciate it, thank you. Please give more energy, please give more energy. We want, you know, they, they can feel it. Make, make them feel, make them feel it. Come on, make them feel, make them feel the love. Make them feel that your presence is here. Jamal, can you come up? We're going to hear from his siblings in a little bit. But we're going to take a break to hear from the grandson of Mumia Abu-Jamal. So oh, come on, that's right. Listen, y'all got to give energy. We coming together, we coming together in love. But some of this is heavy, and we need, we, 
We need to give energy, okay? So please give your energy. And we're going to hear now from Jamal. Scream with me, Abu Jamal. Free Maroon. Free them all. But most of all, we need to free ourselves. We're here for Walter Wallace, right? We're here for Maroon. Uh, we're here for everybody who has been targeted by the state. Earlier, somebody, um, I actually forget the name. He, he, uh, he came up and he talked about uh, be, being up here and policing ourselves. Right. Being up here and because uh, we know how the community works. Right. We don't need to call the police, you know, when things are going uh, wrong, because we need to make a dedication to be here for our, for each other. Walter Wallace's story is much like Micaiah Bryant's story that just happened. The police came and they saw a threat. And they came to neutralize that threat by any means. It was no negotiation, right? That, that person needed to be on the ground because they deemed it so. We will not have that. We won't have that, right? That man's body hit the ground with his family watched. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You shouldn't have to see that. That shouldn't have happened. Similar... Similarly, that little girl's body hit the ground as her family watched. And what I'm thinking about is that the, the way that these two cases are together is that we need to learn how to not dial 911. Because they're, they, they're definitely not here for us. 911 is not here for us. Can y'all dig that? No. No longer are we going to call these, these people to come and kill our people. No longer. So definitely, I'm, I'm with the message of learning how to uh, mitigate these things or, uh, or, I'm sorry, <laughs> by ourselves. I didn't expect to uh, come up and speak today, so I'm sorry. But um, thank you. Um, but I'm a revolutionary, right? I'm a revolutionary through and through. We can't reform anything. Because it, it, it's, it's going to switch up. Well, why are we reforming it? Right? I'm a revolutionary and you should be too. Anytime that they tell us to negotiate the type of freedoms that we're going to enjoy, that is a trap. We need to be doing our best to abolish these systems. We are not playing anymore. Listen, we have political prisoners behind bars because they were teaching. Did you guys know that Mumia Abu Jamal was the was he was establishing and he was sending out information for the Black Panther Party? That was his job to make sure that we are all informed. And he was targeted by the police. Did you know that Fred Hampton? Fred Hampton was known for I mean, obviously he was charismatic, but he was a recruiter. He will recruit people who have no business being together because he understood that we have to stand together against the people that want to pit us, pit us in the ground. And he was targeted. We have to learn how to be the people that make sure that we're not having these events again because somebody's in the ground. So, what I need us to do is make a dedication to inform, inspire the next revolutionaries. We had a gap of time where no revolutionaries were being produced because people were scared, people were talking about getting their money, right? People were trying to trying their best to survive in America. I understand, but we need revolutionaries because that's the only way that we're going to get out of this, this hole. 
We need to do better. We all do. I need to do better. Y'all need to do better. We need to be better friends. We need to be better neighbors. We need to try our best to make sure that we're not having this again. I don't want to see another family sitting on the bench um, thinking about their child who just died. Not at all. I want to close this um, with, with a call to action. I want you guys to hold up your fists. I want you guys to hold up your fists. And we heard this before, but it is something that we need to think about every time that we're forced with an opportunity, every time that we're, we're facing our enemy. We have to remember that. And I want you guys to repeat after me. I am a revolutionary. I am a revolutionary. Now, continue to repeat after me. We will no longer trust the police. 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 Because the people are stronger. Because the people are stronger. Than the police. Than the police. Than the government. Than the government. The people are the strongest force on this planet. The people are the strongest force on this planet. And you believe in each other. We believe in each other. Thank you. The pigs in my hood. The pigs in my hood. No good. The pigs in your hood. Ain't no good. The pigs in our hood. Ain't no good. So don't arrest me. Reverse the police. 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 Fuck twelve. Fuck twelve. Fuck twelve. Fuck twelve. Yeah. Thank you, Jamal. Fuck twelve. Y'all want to do that chant one more time? I love that chant. The pigs in my hood ain't no good. The pigs in your hood ain't no good. The pigs in my hood ain't no good. The pigs in our hood ain't no good. So don't arrest me. Arrest the police. So don't arrest me. Arrest the police. So don't arrest me. Arrest the police. So don't arrest me.
Don't take any day for granted. Any day. Our lives matter. It does. Our lives matter. And we will never have a peaceful night. We talk to each other every day. No matter what we went through, we spoke every day. We can't get his phone call, we can't get his texts, we can't get a million rings at the door, we can't get pop-up visits any time of the day, none of it. So please cherish one another. My brother believed in everyone that he came across, no matter if they were good or bad. month anniversary of when Walter Wallace Jr. was taken from his family, from his loved ones. And we can hear and see with our own eyes that the pain of that loss is as present as it was the day that it happened. And so can we just give another love offering, clap it up, for the family of Walter Wallace Jr. We need to keep them in our hearts, keep them in our prayers, and we need to continue to show up until we take justice for Walter Wallace Jr.'s murder, until we avenge his death. And so just keep the family of Walter Wallace Jr. in your hearts and in your thoughts and in your rage and in your action and in your organization until we tear this shit down and build the world that black people actually deserve, all right? All right. So, I want to welcome to the stage a phenomenal Philadelphia poet by the name of Scheist. I think we could use something to lift our spirits, right? So, welcome to the stage, Scheist. Where you at, Scheist? Everybody good? Everybody good? I just believe um, art and activism go together. After you do the art, you need the activists. When the activists is out there doing the work, they're going to need the rats, the poems, the songs to keep their spirits up. We agree? So the count of three is make as much noise as you can, and we're going to bring it down. We're going to get to this. One, two, three. 
Okay, okay, black love energy. King Shice. Poetic royalty, the metaphors and similes. Author, the visual language, imagery. Picture me reciting poems, holding the microphone in the street corner with that black gorilla family energy. Ball cap fitted, white t-shirt with George Jackson image. I'm as crazy as the gods when I write my life, recite with blood in my eyes. I shine like a diamond ring, fashion myself like a customized jeweler bling. Measure stick for greatness, I am my own ruler, king. And this world is dark and heavy, I came to make it light. How you royalty if you're not rocking your crown right? You know they want us divided like Tootsie and Hutu. I'm trying to bring us together like Zulu. King Shyster, see me, see Shaka. You know white supremacy's a lion giant, but I'm King David. The truth don't stop. My lyrics is like a slingshot. What you think all the poems are for? I'm the elephant in the open mic room. I'm so Hannibal, I just want you to be more. I'm Joe Hannibal, I just want you to be more. But they do it, they will crucify your dreams in the slum. And three days later, only the king of kings can resurrect them. Like birth, she's earth. But Malcolm says she's the most disrespected. You a pawn if you leave your queen unprotected. The people who have been elected. King, three parts of a whole I bring. Mind, body, and soul. So my thoughts are black like Africa. Spirit rooted in Ethiopia. Walk like I'm royalty. North Philly, Holly Selassie. And knowledge itself is worth than a mass of Musa Mali. But you know this government was the God body state property. Because where I'm from, young guns bury sons in the slum. And they fall like autumn leaves. So in the coldest winter, they carry heat. They've been playing in our face for 400 summers. So I spring forward with good teaching. Respect the mic. It's King Shai Caesar. We, did, we, did, we heard this, this tale over and over again. This is Rockman's story. He was 19 with a face tat, pants sagging down his back. His favorite gun, Black Nine, used to carry all the kind. Time, you know the kind, converted to Islam when he called it three to nine. He claims his name to Rahman, never read the Quran. His religion was playing, his religion was praying on the block, slinging rocks while ducking the cops. He drove a 2014 blue Nissan, kept that meat mills on, said the windows had the cops drawn. Whole hood remember that day he jumped out on D. They was cool back in grade school, but D played by the rules, so Rockman thought he was square. Jumped out his car, started clowning his gear. D ain't had no time for this. Pussy kept it moving. Rockman took that as some kind of diss. Thought he was the neighborhood John Gotti, so he pulled out and put four in his black body. Thought that gun gave him power. Police came arresting him in less than 48 hours. But D, we held a candlelight visual. Teddy bears and candles, weed and Hennessy with no tears here. We used to them casualties, them cause and effect of white supremacy. Stop the killing. I need a new nigga for that dark bird to follow, cause while Jim Crow over me, I can't see tomorrow. It's the miseducation of the Negro. Is she a black bee or is she a queen? Is it 4th of July or Juneteenth? But imagine it's just, imagine it's just living in place and time. Whether you look and sleep and eat, it's white and for color only signs. Inferiority complex and self-hate start to combine. Don't you see how that would mess with your mind? Life starts to look like a mutilated death, but we keep the casket open. Word to Emmett Till's mom. But my complexion, the nation taught me, was Christ-like. But the privilege one, the privilege one to hold the lowest image, vice type, won't let go. Disciples practicing genocide on the west side of Chicago. But it's all mathematics. It's nothing I can't solve. 360 degrees I've evolved. Wrote this for black man, woman, and child. Sun, moon, and stars. Whole planet is mine. All 196,940,000 square miles. My poem is like Bible stories. Full of proverbs and allegories like Moses at the Red Sea holding his staff. And we waited for Master Farad to come in God's image to interfere, interfere in our affairs on our behalf. So now Rockman realized he God, studied his lessons, stayed in his car, D still alive, got that college degree, no longer call our sisters bees, we address them as queens, and fourth is your we cooking out every June tea. So if you stay on your square, palms open, sending prayers up to the ceiling, blessings and knowledge of self come down, and that's how we stop the killing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the shine. Okay, all right, go ahead. Y'all want more more? Yes! Don't stop. See, I know why the cage Jim Crow sings. You lock it down, it loses its wings. Can't fly on those streets or become prey to be devoured in the belly of the beast. 
America eats his poor, got dark meat stuck between his teeth. So the slaves were set free for a brief moment, stood in the sun, and moved back towards slavery. Them boys in the prison yard can't smell freedom in the air, so they become public enemy caught in the crosshair. But knowledge is power. My mind is black steel in the chaos hour. You can't convince me to change my attitude. Cause I know slavery in America started with a ditch of certitude. How is it any different from the day when the prison and industrial complex got inmates working for pennies a day in the media? Can't convince me that drug sales and use don't cross colonize and ethnic groups, but disproportionately lock down is black and brown. European immigrants put Africans in chains, but Puerto Rico Dominican Republic by the slaves Spain. That's where those slaves came. So the more things change, the more they stay the same, say word. They've been trying to figure out what to do with the black and poor problems since the reconstruction through the research. It ain't hard to tell. They were doing drug sweets on college campus like they do in the hood. The white boys, they call their mom and dad home to produce bail. But white privilege get the criminal justice system to slide the scale. Ain't no black gangs in the suburbs. Blacks are the black, brown the brown, white the white. Everybody's getting high, no lie. But they want a racial profile. Stop and frisk the guys. Listen, he was convicted by the testimony of an eyewitness. Judge Craig Gavel passed sentence. For over two decades, he was left sentenced. So he got exonerated by DNA evidence. It's proof. Put your left hand on the Bible, raise your right hand, swear to tell the truth. How many in that last scenario see someone that looked like me as youth, wasted behind bars, and those who couldn't take it put a belt around their neck, and a cell becomes strange fruit. Noose. But I'm a man, so I'm born to stand a wreck. I let words ejaculate from my lyric next to tell the criminal justice system to use a lying trick. And I come with the truth and let it bust all over you. That courtroom don't see me. Care less about that faith you believe in. So that leads me right these prison parallels way past the margin. But my brother and sister can't get parole, a government pardon. They say I write like a lyrical rap. I'm half poet, half pastor, work like a slave to become I self lord and master of this craft. Black magic, witchcraft, nothing up my sleeve. I just use words to conjure spells and make you believe in your brilliance. Human spirit, resilient. So if you upstate on those tears, no tears. Peace, queen, one love, king. See, I know. Why the cage Jim Crow sings. All right, y'all, give it up for Brother Saint. Give it up for Saint. All right, we're going to keep the poetry vibe going. I am so, so excited to welcome to the stage a college student. So, one of our young poets in the city by the name of Ashante, please come to the stage, show her some love. She was very, very excited to come and share some words about all that's going on. So please give her some love and some encouragement. Everybody hear me okay? Yeah. All right. Um, so my message is for the millennials. I am a senior in college. I'm the oldest of five siblings, so I'm going to start off this piece with a quote from Mumia Abu-Jamal from his interview from 1996. He said, when people recognize their power, the power to say no, the power to say enough, the power to say, well, damn it, let's get together and change this thing, then anything will be possible. He said, if that message gets out there to the young adults who are thinking about their tomorrow, then it don't matter what they do to me. They didn't stop me. So if you're out here and you're in your teens or you're in your 20s, we owe it to our ancestors, living and non-living, to be the change. We are the offspring of our uh, we are the offspring of our freedom fighters which means we were born to carry out the vision our grandparents parents aunts and uncles fought for who else is going to check america they want us to pledge our allegiance to some bullshit that don't even apply to our people with liberty and justice for all my black ass we haven't had liberty since they replaced the black woman who was once the statue of liberty in 1865 And don't mistake the conviction of Derek Chauvin as justice because we are all out here today for a black man who was a son, a brother, a father, a husband that didn't deserve to be gunned down by these blue boy gangsters with no spines in their back. Hey. Let him know. 
Mumia also said that Jamaicans have a saying that goes, who feels it knows it. We've all felt the pain of losing another person in our community, so we know that we are that we got. We are roots stubborn and planted in Mississippi cotton fields. We are the feet of marches from Selma to Jenna 6. So understand that when people say we are the descendants of royalty, feel that and move in that way. Free Mumia, free them all, and long live Walter Wallace Jr. Thank y'all so much. Yeah, come on, I need some more round of applause. That young sister shut it down. Thank you so much. So can uh, Russ the Third come to the stage, please? And while he's coming, let's say free Maroon! Free Maroon! Free Maroon! Free Maroon! All right, I am so honored to welcome to the stage the son of Russell Maroon Schultz, that is Russ the third. Now get, show him some love, y'all, show him some love. Um, I just want to thank everybody um, for coming out. Uh, on the count of three, I want y'all to make as much noise as y'all can. One, two, three! Yeah. I can't hear you, I can't hear you. Hey, check this out, check this out. That was for you. That was for you. That was for all the love you brought out for my dad, for the Wallace family, and for just coming out this entire year, the years before. But now is more important than ever. You know, we can't, we can't turn back. One of the things I'm noticing is, is that our energy level goes like this. It goes like this. And we can't afford for our energy level to be going like this. Because the police and the state energy level go like this. It just stays consistent like that. And we have to have a certain level of consistency that stays that way. That's what our political prisoners do. They keep that level of consistency. That's what Mumia is doing right now. He's keeping it right here. Heart shit, all kinds of torture shit. Mumia is still keeping it right here. RPP is keeping it right here. They're always keeping it right here for y'all. They did it for us. The Panthers and all of that, they did it for us. So now it's our turn to try to give some back. And one of the best ways that you can give some stuff back is to just... Bring your best self to the table. Your best self. Bring your best self to the table. A lot of times, we have issues. We all have issues. We all have schisms. We all have family problems. Get that straight before you come here. Because a lot of times, we think that this is the place for you to figure out all of that. No, this is not the place for you to figure out all of that. This is the place where you come when you finish figuring that out. Because we don't have the time to help you figure out that. Not only that, if you watch, how many people watch Judas Messiah piece, the, the Fred Hampton or the, uh, or the Glass House tapes, uh, the Snitch movie? The movie about the guy who basically uh, snitched on Fred Hampton and, and told the cops to lay out the Fred Hampton's place and all of that. But in defense of that brother, he was young. He was in a position where people like to a lot of times say that they would do something different. But he was in that position also bringing a lot of stuff to the table. What he was bringing to the table was, I'm young, I'm trying to get money, I'm hustling, I'm stealing cars, I'm doing this and that. So when they catch them, and he's stealing cars or what have you, then they say, you can work with us 
You could be an informant or we could send you to jail for six years. And you could, and you could have simply done the six years. But instead of doing the six years, he became an informant, right? And so what I want to say is, before you get caught in a situation like that, do some work on yourself. Do some work on yourself before you're caught in a situation where you put the whole community at risk. Because I think a lot of times we underestimate that we are at war, that these people are killers and murderers. If you watch Fred get murdered in his bed by his wife with his child in her stomach, then you should recognize these people are killers. And any thought short of that you're unprepared to be in this conversation. You're unprepared to be here in this room. You need to go back, do some study and some research on who and what we're dealing with. We are clearly and have clearly been at war for a long time. So now it's time for us to move forward into the future with a better understanding a lot of us have not read our contemporaries. A lot of us have not read the revolutionaries before us. We out here running, gunning, talking, doing, but we are not studied and struggled. We are not studied. I've run across a lot of comrades, and by their actions, I know that they are not studied. By your lack of solidarity, I know you are not studied. By your cointel pro actions, I know that you are not studied. By the way you talk about your own comrades to me, I know you are not studied. If you were studied, you would understand that solidarity is greater than that little shortcoming that you're talking about that your comrade had. And so I'm gonna wrap on this, you guys. I can't say how important it is for us to not just respect the political prisoners, you know, like Maroon and Mumia and all of the PPs, but we have to be constantly building a new movement. You know, we have to be building a new movement constantly. We have to constantly be fighting for those who don't have a voice or their voices have been snuffed out. And anything short of that is unacceptable, you guys. The type of work, energy, and love that we need to put in in order for this stuff to stop is not happening. They kill our children and we don't do nothing. Our children. They kill our children, and we don't do anything. Let's stop allowing these type of atrocities to happen in our community. And that's going to take solidarity. That's going to take organizing. So when you leave here, get yourself together first, then come back to be in solidarity and to organize. Thank y'all. I love y'all. Give it up. Give it up for yourselves. I can't hear you. Give it up. And I'd like to thank all of the organizers. I definitely want to send love to the Wallace family. We love y'all. The Shokes family is here for the Wallace family. Anything you guys need, we are here to support y'all. Thank you. Come on, come on, y'all. Give them some energy. We got to understand how hard it is for our community members who have to fight and spend their lives fighting in order to, to get justice for themselves and for their family members. That's a tireless act, and they have to do it all day. And they came out here in order to support the Wallace family because they deserve that support. We need to support all of them. Give some more love to the Abu Jamal family. Give some more love to Maroon, and give some more love to the Wallace family. Come on.
Now I want to invite you guys to all come closer. I want you to come closer so that you can see the screen here. We want you to be able to see the screen. As I told you before, I think that was me. As I told you before, Walt made a song, and we're going to play Walt's video. So if you if you can make sure that you're in position to be able to see the screen, okay? We're gonna we're gonna invite Aubrey to come up. This is Walt's daughter. Come on, y'all. You know what I just said? about our communities. 
How can they be talking about what they all this, you know, the hood, blah, 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 blah. They don't care about our communities. You know what I mean? Listen to the words that people say. I don't give a damn if they burn down Target. Because Target should be on the streets with us, calling for the justice that our people deserve. Where was AutoZone at the time when Philando Castile was shot in a car, which is what they actually represent? Come on, give it up, give it up. So when they tell you, when they tell you about how Walt cares, this is what you say. He made this song, he put this song out just this summer, right? Like just in last summer, right? And then you see what happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. You know, he's an artist, and he wanted to put out something to speak to the community. Let's take a moment, y'all. Let's just take a moment. Let's just take a moment for you. Let's just take a moment. Can we just take a moment together here with the family? Let's take some breaths. Can we take some breaths? Let's take some breaths, okay? Let's just take some deep breaths and breathe. Breathe in. Breathe out. Mm. You're going to breathe in love. And breathe out pain. You're going to breathe in support. And breathe out fear and loneliness. We're going to breathe in power and victory. And breathe out any more losses. We are here together. We're here together. We love y'all. So, we know that one of the things that was going on in that moment was that Walt was dealing with, you know, a mental health moment. And so our brother Gabe is here to speak to that issue as it relates to our community. So I'm going to invite Gabe to come on up. Now I want y'all to know that Gabe puts in a lot of work, y'all. And he deserves some energy. So can y'all give him some energy? talk about mental health as it relates to this story of Walter Wallace Jr. and the family. First of all, we want to thank again the family. So if you can, please give them all some love. <laughs> Wife, children, siblings, parents, show them all love. You know, I look at this scene right here of, of Walter Wallace Jr. and it just reminds me once again of the, the lineage of black men in America and black people ultimately around the world. You know, there's a quote by the great Dr. Bobby Wright, black psychologist who says, the last war for black people is the war for our minds. He closes that fight, his, that statement by saying, and we're losing. The last fight for black people was for our minds, and we're losing. I heard Shai say in his spoken word poem, we've been dealing with this for the past 400 summers. And I think in many ways, the trauma associated with death, destruction, violence, anti-blackness, racism, white supremacy, white domination, it's, it's put a number on, on many of us. But for as much as we talk a lot about breaking generational curses, that's the word of the day, I want to talk briefly about the importance of keeping 
generational wisdom. See, we talk a lot about the breaking of the curses, right? We talk a lot about the curses and the challenges and the traumas. But I don't know about you, but if your family's like mine, my grandma gave me a lot of game. My pop pop gave me a lot of game. My uncles put me onto a lot of information and history that's been passed down. It wasn't a curse. It was generational wisdom. And we can't forget that. See, the curses is one thing because it understands that it's embedded in some of our behaviors and actions and ideas. I'm talking about those things that mom used to tell you at midnight when you call her crying. That was generational wisdom. I'm talking about when you had a crisis and didn't know your left from right, up from down, and had to call my mom and say, what in the heck is going on? She may not have understood your problem in that moment, but all she could provide for you in that time was generational wisdom. Something passed down from her mama and something passed down from that mama. And so we need to embrace those ideas. See, sometimes we focus too much on the curses. And we should talk about it, right? Because those things we want to break, we want to work, put the work in and, and end those things. But in the spirit of behavioral health, we also want to be strength-based. See, behavioral health, mental health tells us to be strength-based, to understand that ultimately we don't want to operate from a deficit. We want to operate from an idea that all of us right now in this space are assets to our community. And we have a divine opportunity, a divine experience, and a divine livelihood that's going to change the foundations of Philadelphia. So when it comes down to mental health, we've all been dealing with so much. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes we can't sleep, we can't rest, we can't work, we can't learn. People say all the time, hey, Brother Gabe, the word trauma is overused. So I don't quite understand what it means. I say this simply. Trauma is anything that impacts your ability to live, love, learn. Keep it simple. Trauma is anything that impacts your ability to live, love, learn. And so if something happened in your childhood, or well, something happened seven days ago, if it impacts your ability to be on a job the next day, to be with your partner tonight, or to even leave this space whole this afternoon, that's real trauma. And we can all fight through it. We have numbers. 215-685-6440. I'll give it again at the end. If you have any challenges with mental health, 215-685-6440. Talk to somebody. 24-hour hotline. But deeper than numbers, I want us to be the main takeaway today. This is a 24-hour hotline. I'm going to say it again before we close. This is our hotline, family. See, that's old teaching. That's old school teaching. That's the teaching that says, what if none of these systems were around, what will we do? Simple question. If none of these systems were around, and guess what? Once upon a time, they weren't here. Damn it, we've been on the planet for a million years. Some say 100,000. Some say 500,000. Whatever the number is, 
for tens of thousands of years, there was no hotline. What do we have, family? What do we have? Who keep us safe? Who keep us safe? Who keep us safe? Who keep us safe? So if you need to understand and learn new ways to cope, new ways to adapt that are not destructive to you or harming somebody else, we can share it with you. Mindfulness techniques, prayer techniques, meditation techniques, we can do all those things. And they all work. But I'm going to close with this though. Nothing works better than, than knowing you have a brother, sister, sibling, comrade, or friend to lean on in moments of your highest mental devastation, family. So this is both and work, not either or. It's both and work. Do what you got to do from the therapeutic side with your counselors, right? I know there's a stigma about therapy in our community, but we got to get rid of that. We know where it comes from because we've been taught to be against mental health in our community for too long. And more importantly, they told us as black people that we were crazy who want to escape from slavery. Did we not? Is that history? Is that history? They told us we wanted to leave the plantation that we crazy. So since that point, we've never wanted to been associated with anything that put us into a so-called asylum. Thus, in our community, what do we know? We got Uncle So-and-so who live in the basement. We know Uncle So-and-so. So and so who come around the holidays. Everybody know him or her or them. I'm gonna tell you they're a little bit different, but they okay, right? Because mama and grandma take care of them. They understand what it means. They know their needs, their wants, and desires. So it's a it's a both and movement family for our mental health and wellness. Do what you got to do on the front end. Let's not be over-medicated. I'm going to say it again. Let's not be over-medicated. That's a whole other war in and of itself. But the other piece of it is this. Find somebody that you can consistently talk to moments of crisis. And I guarantee you that we'll all come out of it healthier and whole as our community, as a people. Give thanks, y'all. I say. Clap it up, clap it up. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. 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 Brother Gabe says something very important that I want to make sure we, we heard properly. As much as we need to be organized in our resistance, we also have to be organized in our care for each other, how we show up for each other, how we are aware of what is going on in one another's life. So when we are at a point of crisis, we don't have to call 911, right? We can call on each other and get each other the therapeutic care that we need, the human connection care that we need. So who keeps us safe? Who keeps us safe? Who keeps us safe? All right, y'all. So we want to keep our spirits high, right? This is a, a very heavy time for our community. We are continuously having to mourn our loved ones. We are continuously having to fight for the freedom of our political prisoners like Maroon Schultz, like Mumia Abu-Jamal, like so, so many others. But we have to also recognize that there is resistance in our joy, right? Is there resistance in our joy? I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not really feeling your energy. Is there resistance in our joy? All right, so 
I'm excited to bring to the stage someone who you may have seen behind the turntables, but who is also an incredible artist. So I want y'all to welcome to the stage Spirit Child of the Maroon Solidarity, the Maroon Party for Liberation, who came all the way down from New York to be here with us today. So give it up for Spirit Child. One, two, one, two, okay, cool, got it. So peace, y'all. Um, just respect to all the elders and the veterans that are here. We got Black Panthers in the house. Just give it up for them. Brother Tariq, we got Brother Shep, we got Mama Joy, we got a bunch of people out here putting in work, so please do give up to the club, the Cubs that are here, and also the Black Panthers that are here, Young Lords, you know, we're talking about a rainbow coalition with a Maroon Party for Liberation, and I'm going to do a few songs, just real quick, we dropped the album for Russell Maroon Show, so this is one track for it, you can just press that roll, Russell's going to be a DJ right now, oh yeah, we got, we got some, some things over there too, if you want to check us out. Hit it. Okay. Oh, there it is. All right, cool. Move it up a little bit. All right, cool. All right. The maroons everywhere. Yeah. We maroons, not bullets. See we maroons, see we maroons. We We maroons, y'all, not bullets. Yes. We will put my maroons in front of us. We will never compromise. Settle, never settle, no settlements. My sentiments, no jujitsu pedals, no puppeteers, purpose strings, or the single silence. Lions, promises, you violence and violence. Victories are never cool. Lions and lioness. Training is peccable. Who trained with samurai? Sensei, friend, ho. My friend is Wong Chango. My ancestors bless ya. Now what I was seeing. Tango, Tango, Iyanfo, Akupon Town, War Town, Veracruz, no Issa, Veracruz, no Issa, Mafia de Fung Chango, Ogu, Ogu, Fuck them, fuck them, Galagichi, stay Galagichi, my veins from Dalsa, Global Sun, Zabatista, Zabu, all the world, watch yourself now, we connect in continents, Fuck the government, revolutionary nation up. You can feel it in the air, never scared. My room, we prepared. Go be aware, stay prepared. Kill your inner fear, strike with us, strike with us. Live with us, yes, we here. The victory is certain. We were ready, what? You can feel it in the air, never scared. My room, we prepared. Go be aware, stay prepared. Kill your inner fear, strike with us, strike with us. Run with us, yes, we here. Victory is certain. We can be two, we won. Winning is to be won, y'all. Say Maroon! Winning is to be won. Y'all Maroon, that better say a lot of than that. I'm gonna do a little melody real quick, you know, because I like to like take some beats and like bump it up a bit. Y'all can vibe with me a little bit. Walter Wallace family, what's up, y'all? Hey, 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 hey. We're talking about resistance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hey, 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 hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Revolution on phone, yeah. Don't you feel like you're about to give the system the tightest fight it ever did see in its life? Revolution on me, yeah. Don't be smurfing in me, yeah. Lock your load and control on for the science, all of this mind. Well, all right, make a man never feel like a maroon, maroon. Woman never feel like a maroon, maroon. You still feel like a maroon moon Black like killer black with a business for who no The amount of control with the media lies it's untold Well if you're a bad man then I work your plan Like the system of all of your soul revolution on the phone yeah Don't you feel like you're bored to Give the system the tightest fight to ever to see in its life Revolution does need ya yeah. Don't be slurping in the heat, yeah. Lock your load and control up for the science all of this life. So, they try and tell me I ain't fit for that. They schools, they rules, I ain't fit for that. That's true, I'm a rule, I'm an aristocrat. I ain't a cold, I'm a rule, there's no fixing that. Nah, need the plantation, I'm not a problem. I'm a solution like the Haitian Revolution, sing it. Sock, basse, na boule, set fire to the oppression, la la roule. Hey, I see the media teach. Well, I'ma tie your tools to the youth of carriage Better yet, we train youth to think So they can see what you poor and choose not to drink This life is but a blink 
The one man is my sacrifice. Rocks I sling, pure rocks I sling. Like sling shot hip hop, rocks him slave dance, freedom from prison. And I ain't talking about that whack yo. I'm talking about a new black eyes moving in stereo. Left, right, discipline, the scenario. Wake him up, Philly, give him the bomb bomb. BX to Brooklyn, give him the bomb bomb. Queens on deck by Southeast Asia. A new rule coming through out of the stats up. Her spread, don't trust the system. Whatever they want, they give them none. Yo, let it spread, don't trust the system. Whatever they want, whatever they want, whatever they want. So, revolution has found me out. Don't you feel like you're going to give the system the tightest fight to tell but it's see in its life? Hey, okay, so last one real quick. If you're cool, shame the rules, y'all. Free my two to Chicago. Free my man, Paul Jamal. Old school at the beginning of rap, next time more at the beginning of boom bap. From back, Africa black, red, black, and green, get a black track. Shaking them off, breaking them off, shaking them off, taking them off like the cough. Ah, gotta get them off, gotta get them up to rush and disrupt that boss. Anyway, I'm looking for my getaway, but the days appear to be by the way. And I'm ready for this, the black twist, like catalyst, for the resistance. Instance, in this, moment in time, moment to sit, moment to rhyme, moment to spit. Hold this time, hold this twist. It's your eye, when you fight, I fight, you die, I die, ah It's your eye, when you live to live, I live to live, ah, ah It's your eye, when you fight, I fight, you die, I die, ah It's your eye, when you live hey. It's on that black power, freedom fighter African that loves the side of Organizer, ready rider, liberation's business inside of me See, I'm on fire for the people, never time for ever lie Till I die, get up high until we all free Free Maroon, free Maroon, yep Till we all free, free will be a free will be a yep. Till we all free, free and free and yep. Till we all free, free. Hey. Can't debate the human race disease. On the earth, I'm poor, can you say? On the earth, race and the sun don't set. Twinkle and eyes, she's quite upset. Ever got to put his card on the stick of the old song? Full blown, but it ain't slow. Won't you tell you to get a little low? My face don't stay, never be left alone. Your face don't go on the cell phone. Don't get cold, now you're cold. Go by your clock, if we get done, we get done, we get done, I won't stop hip hop. I feel the hip hop sound before I push the clock. I won't talk, either play it rock. I'm gonna really like ready to rock. What's the wall? Ah, it's your eye, when you fight, I fight, you die, I die. Ah, it's your eye, when you live to live, I live to live, rise. Ah, it's your eye, when you fight, I fight, you die, I die. Ah, it's your eye, when you live. Cause I'm that black power, freedom fighter African that loves inside of Organizer, ready rider Liberation speaks inside of me See, I'm on fire For the people never tired forever now Till I die, get up high Until we all free Free, free, free the world say free Free, free, free the total say free Free, free, free and say free Free, free, free of all I love y'all, party people, peace. Give it up, let's give it up for Spirit Child. You know, I never knew that someone could turn that second song you did into a revolutionary anthem. If you know the original song, that was quite a pivot. But you know, Tony K. Bambara says that we have to make the revolution irresistible. <laughs> so that was a irresistible remix. So thank you, Spirit Child. And so we have a few more performances and then we're gonna close out with a bit of an open mic so we can hear some folks from the community speak to these issues, show love for the family of Walter Wallace Jr., um, show support for our political prisoners who we are going to bring home, right? We, go, we are going to bring them home, right? All right, so I am excited to welcome to the stage Brother Fist, Brother Fist, Brother Fist? Where you at, Brother Fist? Okay, Brother Fist is running. So show Brother Fist some love as 
they make their way to the stage. And also, uh, Caitlin and Annie, if you are also ready to perform, you are next. Brother Fist. All right, put a, put a fist up for Brother Fist. Peace, how y'all doing out there? Peace. I just wanted to share a few words with you, and I also want to ask, I don't know if anybody has a drum. I think I saw a tambourine around here somewhere. All right, I might need your help in a moment. All right, it's Tito Fish Rivera. I came down here from New York City with my comrades in the Maroon Liberation Party. And I want to send a shout out to my elders, uh, Shep, Kat, Tariq Haskins. I really love seeing Mumi Abu Jamal's grandson. Those things you've been doing right on, brother. I would be remiss if I didn't first take a moment to share a few things with y'all I hope you will appreciate. On this land here, and I just wanted to mention, I noticed that a lot of events lately, people have been shouting out the original inhabitants of this land in this area would be the Lenape. So if you didn't know that, I want you to take that with you today. When you were around Philadelphia, remember the many generations of people who were here who lived on this land, who had their families on this land, who hunted and thrived on this land before the colonizers came. Now myself, I represent in a very important tribe, at least to me, and I hope after you leave here today, that'll be the second thing you may learn new that I want you to leave with. A lot of people know the story about Christopher Columbus and how he was found lost at sea. But I find a lot of people today still don't know the name of the people he encountered. Those are my people, my ancestors. And so today I want to also send a shout out and ask the ancestors of my Taino people. It's an important fact to know that Taino people were the first ones who were willing to embrace these new visitors in the hopes that maybe they would be new trading partners. But pretty quickly they found out these motherfuckers was no good. 529 years ago. They were the first ones to stand and fight for their families. They were the first Maroons. And they were the first rebels in this hemisphere. So remember the name, the Taino. They are also an important ancestral connection for people from Borinquen, which is today known as Puerto Rico, Cubacan, which is the original name of Cuba, and all the islands of the Caribbean. And if you come across anybody, Puerto Rican, Dominican, Cuban, Haitian, Jamaican, recognize that they share that common ancestry. And I'm honored to be able to take this moment to remember the Nape people, to remember my ancestors, and to remember your ancestors who have fought side by side against the beast for over 500 years. Now there's a lot of things I could do up here today, but I'm gonna do something a little different. This is where I need the sister with the drum, unless you found something, Spirit, that you think would be good. I'm going to sing a song in the traditional Taino language. I hope you enjoy it. I'm not necessarily a singer, but amongst my people, as long as you have a voice, you can sing. So I'm going to sing from my heart and the language of my ancestors and share this special moment with you. Yeah. 
interconnected and that we are ultimately fighting for all of our peoples to be free and particularly indigenous peoples from Turtle Island to the African continent. So give it up one more time for Brother Fist. All right, are Caitlin and Annie ready to take the stage? All right, give it up, give it up. We are going to have some dance performance. And I believe you came all the way from New York also. Okay, uh, no, they came from around the way. So thank you so much. You might just need a little bit of room in front um, once we get started. But thank you all for having us. Excuse me. Dear Walter Wallace Jr., dear black man, dear black man in America, dear black women and trans women and black people who have graduated to our ancestry for the sake of the system that we've been fighting to fit into for centuries, please watch over us. Your brothers and your sisters your mothers and your fathers, your friends and your foes. We have failed you, and we're learning to do better, to love deeper, to protect what's ours, not out of fear, but out of love. Please watch over us, but not until you rest, not until you relish in your serenity, and not until you receive the amount of love that you gave to this world and more. Thank you for your sacrifice. Although unwarranted, your lessons are invaluable to your community and beyond. We are hurting in your name. We are loving in your name. We are fighting for you and for others like you. In your honor, we fight for peace. In your honor, we aim to protect, not on the premise of fear, but on the premise of love. Thank you.
numbers ran through me. I felt them pass through my bones, through liver and lung and stomach. Washed me into the big white cloud lake, and I floated. No knowledge of swimming, but I floated. Right between fear and mountains, just beneath blues and birds, right next to the sun. Even in the middle of wind. Even in the middle of wind. Brother Brandon. 
Which mic? Wait, let me let me just make sure. Let me just wipe all the mics. We keep us safe. Who keep us safe? Y'all sure? Oh my goodness. Who keep us safe? We keep us safe. Who keep us safe? We keep us safe. That's right. That's right. We can count on each other. We all we got, but we all we need. I just want to say thank you for having me. I want to say thank you for coming out on the strength of Walter Wallace. Walter Wallace is here. The soul never dies. The soul never dies. Walter Wallace is in you. Walter Wallace is in the children. Walter Wallace is in our ancestors, in our adults, in everybody that's out here. One time for Walter Wallace. One time for Walter Wallace. See, they talk about mental health, right? But what about the mental health of the police officers that hate us? What about the mental health of the police officers that are raised to hate us? They the ones that carry the pistols. Those are the ones that say protect and serve. But they were born, they were taught, and they were raised to hate black people. You know, it's amazing, right? Because I tell people all the time, action speaks louder than words, right? But I'm going to take it a step further and say character speaks louder than actions. Your, your words say you out here. Your actions say, I'm out here. But what do your character say when you leave from here? What do your character say when you go back home and it's just you and your family, or it's just you? Do your character say, Black Lives Matter? Do your character say, for the community? Do your character say, love all? That's the question. I tell people all the time, man, and I'm not going to be long at all. I speak on addiction. I try to help people in my community, help people across the United States of America on addiction. Because I know one thing about addiction, it tears families, it tears the community. I got three years clean and I keep telling people, three years sober, and I tell people over and over and over again, only us can raise us, only us can teach us, only us can protect us, and if you want drugs, you can't do nothing. You can't raise kids, you can't teach the kids, you can't raise and teach in our community, you cannot do nothing until you get sober. We gotta be there for Walter Wallace's children. We have to be there for Walter Wallace's family. We have to be there for our family. We have to be there for our village. And the only way we can be receptive to change is if our mental health change. So get sober. I want to send my strength and my hope to those who are struggling with addiction. I want to send my strength and hope to those who are struggling with mental health. And to the men out here. Don't be afraid to talk to the men out here. Don't be afraid to cry to the men out here. Don't be afraid to ask, can you help me? Because I can help you. I know what it feels like to be a deadbeat father. I know what it feels like to be a drug addict. I know what it feels like to tear down my community. But today, I'm three years clean and I'm not doing it no more. We love for Walter Wallace. Walter Wallace! words and I really appreciate you bro. I really appreciate you Brandon. Like I said he was out here. He'd been out here on these streets. Yeah, that's how we met. That's how we met. Alright so if Christian's here can you come over? And while we wait for Christian to come over we're going to bring up brother Talib the poet. Did I say it right? Alright. Alright. Come on up. Oh wait. 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 I almost forgot, because we keep forgetting. We've been wanting to say this over and over again so many times. Please go over and grab some food. We got so much good, fresh food over here. 
We got also these food packages here. These food packages here were brought by, oh, they almost done, that's great, by Immortal Technique. He brought this, he was here yesterday, but he brought food. He couldn't stay, but he, was, he wanted to make sure food came over here for today to, to as a gift for her in, in honor of, of our brother Walt. And there's lots of food over there. There's bags. And don't forget, there's clothes over there. So please, please make sure you get over there. But now we're going to hear from, from our good brother who's going to give us some poetry. And you can use either of those mics. Hello? Hello? Okay, yeah. Uh... My name is Tyler the Poet. I'm going to make this first part uh, short and simple. I'm going to give y'all a poem called My Blood So Cold. But before I say that, um, there's a lot of uh, things being said about gun control and gun violence. The only thing that's not being said is we're not getting to the, we're not getting to the root. The root is, is no way our young people age 15 to 18 or whatever have the ability to produce high-powered weapons. 500 rifles are turning up missing at, at these factories and no factory workers are being arrested. They're not being investigated. But those guns got serial numbers on them and everything. We need to tell, we need to check into the factory workers or shut these factories down if y'all can't keep custody of 500 to 1,000 guns just turning up missing off the assembly line. Let's get to the root before it gets to the 14-year-old who take another life. My name is Tyler DePuy. Partially, you're a part of me. We part of three. We got the heart of the sea. But you got to be flexible because it's harder to see. Because hypocrites, politic, sweeten and polish it to political polish shit. I don't even acknowledge it. I'm more focused on the ants and locusts. Real unions when they can't provoke us. And the family got enough dope to dance on sofas. Until then, it's beef, no fish. Out come times the radius. When it's cloudy, that's when it's the craziest. And loved ones fall victim to the crazy shit. I'm talking about nights when slugs smacked the wall. We was outnumbered. We had to clap and crawl. Too arrogant to collapse and fall. Plus pride wouldn't let us fall. We didn't see summers do both sides of that barrel. Prison do both sides of them bars. War mean both sides get scars. And our families got to live in a crack. We knew the feeling of killing and dying before the war in Iraq. Try catching your man's brains in your leg. What's really than that? When they kill, we kill back. Cops against us. Us against us. Real rap. Feel that? No matter how much soul you search, when the soul hurts, gangsters clap in church. Because that dude in that box right there couldn't match his works. That's how taxes work. If you relax, them niggas will snatch your shirt. That's why the law make outlaws waste deep. We chase these streets just to dream with outdoors. And until them exits become entrance and crime makes sense, I'm a risk every dime trying to get my mom a diamond in the house with a fence. And I pray that that rain don't touch my soul when I clutch that cold steel like an African clutch that bow. Because the system is the monster that made us an animal. Save hypocrites the label as criminals. And we just crucified in between two thieves. And death is the only time we rest in peace. Real peace is when the house and the table is bust with a feast. And your mind ain't got to be stressed when she sleep. With nightmares and you holding your chest in the street. It's like the devil keep pressing repeat. I can't see it. Basically, we just the ghosts in the rear. And it's rare when it's smoke in the air. Toasters, bone noodles, but no smoky the beer. And hope is like hoping for fear. I see the eyes of the young ones. Ain't no hope in they steer. And the brown of that burner is the only focus of care. That's love when the lion get killed by the cub. And the milk of the meat is like a brick in the mud. Blood or no blood, I still told them anchors. I ain't the captain of the boat, but I'm a focus thinker. So you can rest to the water, but the slaughter gonna come. Whether you turn to prayer or reach for the gun. Because they don't give a damn if you the preacher's son. That's why I preach with a gun and sleep knee deep in the slums. Because death bless us like the beatings of drums or the clap of the hand. Toe tag, black bag in the back of the van. And the color is the same as the back of your hand. He was black, but he won't go back to the pen. And I guess they think locking me in is like boxing me in. So I can end up in a box in the end. 
you know the type they expect? Hey, nigga, no light to reflect. No type of respect. I'd rather take the knife to my neck and bang all these streets so it's dark and I'm wet. No sermon, just the burn of the flesh. This the type of bullshit we learn when we stress. We gotta learn that we bless. Cause death got us chasing a dream. And the lesson we learn is less than it seems. When prison get the best of our teens. And college won't accept us like it's part of the scheme. But they smile and shake their hand like you part of the team. Yeah, I'm part of the team. This is not the part you want me to be. That's why my blood's so cold, cause I don't like what I see. My blood's so cold, they wonder why. I ain't scared to fall. So much pain run through my ghetto. I'm living by the gun. In nights and days I made it rain. You might think I'm insane. And even if I could right now, I wouldn't change a thing. Because it's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. And they can't see us fall. That's how I live the poet. Y'all can... I appreciate y'all. Y'all can check me out on Instagram. Thank you, thank you. I know that was well needed. It was well needed and it was well deserved. Y'all can check me out on Instagram under R-I-Z-Z-E-R -Z -Z -E space button D-A space jester. That's Rizzo the Jester. I do comedy, poetry, rap, music, promotion. I appreciate y'all energy. We got to find out why are these guns turning up missing from the factories before they even get to the hood. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now. Thank you. Now, we, we, um, we talk all the time. We talk all the time about the Panthers, right? We always we talk about them, and we, 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 it's almost like like, like, a, like an, a figment of our revolutionary imagination. Right. But they really here, you know what I'm saying? They really existed, and they're still Panthers here. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're still more here from the original Panthers, and we got some right here, right here in the park. We got, we got, these are original Panthers right here, right here. So when y'all talk about the Panthers, and you talk about it, and you have all of this great respect, then when you got them right here, and you miss, then you make sure you show that appreciation and that respect, right? We gonna hear words from our good brother Shep, who's gonna come up here and say a little something, something to y'all. Hey, yeah, we got free ant t-shirts too. So after you hear from brother Shep, you wanna go get your free ant t-shirts. I don't want you to, I don't want you to turn your attention away from brother Shep while he's speaking, but you can look real quick. They're holding them up so you know where to go to get them. This is raising money for our brother Ian Case. Free Ian t-shirts right back there. So y'all can check them out after you hear from Brother Shep. All right? Either one of those are cleaned up for you. No light matter. More power to the people. Power to the people. No, that ain't it. All oh, power to the people! All oh, power to the people! Right on. Uh, before I start, I'd like to um, just acknowledge the Wallace family over there. It's the brother Shep. <laughs> you know, we went through a whole lot of Zoom calls, Zoom calls to get this organized. Um, I was asked to speak here specifically um, to tell you why the Wallace family is going through what they're going through and why these pigs come into our community and kill our people. I'm going to get into that. But first, I want to say thank you for all you who got these postcards, for my comrade, Brother Mamiya, and my other comrade, Maroon. Panthers are still here. All right? We started out when we were young. I was 19. And I was old for a Panther because the average age was 17. My comrade, Mamiya, wasn't even 15. All right? We're the same age. Okay, that's why, for me, this goes on. Because there are still 11 Panthers still in prison. Sandiata is 84 years old. He needs to come home. Bring him home. We just lost Chip in those prisons. Yes, we did. We're losing our comrades in these prisons every day. 
and we have to bring them home. I'm talking about the ones who are not even Panthers. Our elders need to come home. So we got to continue to organize and bring them home. Let me get into community. The reason why these pigs come into our community is because we allow them to come into the community. We need community control over every institution in our neighborhood. Every institution. The schools. The hospitals. The house. Everything in our community is controlled by those from the outside. As far as the pigs are concerned, it needs to be total community control over our own safety. That's right. That's right. When we talk about guns, the brother just spoke about that. It ain't about the fact that still we don't train our youth or ourselves how to respect weapons. And unarmed people are subject to slavery and death. I'm a panther. All right? And we believe in self-defense. That's right. That's right. We believe in protecting our community. No question. That's why we were attacked primarily in 69. When they rolled on Fred Hampton and killed him. When they attacked our L.A. chapter. When they just murdered Panthers all over the place. So if you hear about the Black Liberation Army, and my brother Tyreek is here, this 17 years, because we said we're not going to let them just kill us and then that be some blood on the other side. Right. It's that simple. Right. And we didn't have all this going on because the pigs didn't come around the way because they knew that they had to face the community. We have to find ways to protect our community. Five points. Number one, no police officer can work in your neighborhood unless they live there. They have to be part of the community. So that way, if John's over there messing with that car, and Officer Brown sees him, it's John, what are you doing? I'm coming by the house tomorrow. Right. I'm talking to your parents. Right. Not killing John or beating the shit out of him on the corner, because right. you don't give a damn about him. That's what the residency should be mandatory. So they go to the same schools, his family, they worship in the same houses of worship. They shop in the same stores. They're part of the community, which means that they have a vested interest in the community. And they're not just an occupied army. Number two. Make sure you get all the names of all the pastors. <laughs> right on, brother. I can give it to you. <laughs> I got letters in my pocket from brothers did 50 years with Russell. My brother, when you can, when I get fit, come over to the table. I, I'll say that we can get that done. All right. Number two, you need to have an independent prosecutor in your community that's elected by the community, not appointed. Someone that ran for that office that has the power to subpoena these pigs if they go against the community and get that done. You have to have these precinct commanders that they float around, something happens, they transform, they bring another pig in to take his place. No. That precinct commander needs to come from the community. Elected. Just like they elect these sheriffs in the little towns, you elect that person running the community, running that precinct. So that way they can be fired, or you can just have somebody else running that office. Number three. You have an oversight board of people that come from the community, that are elected by the community, that have the power to hire and fire these pigs, if that's what they are. You can go, like when people go to college and they recruit, you go to the academy and you recruit. That way you eliminate these homicidal maniacs, these idiots that can just take a test and become a pig and shoot you tomorrow. Give them those psychological tests ahead of time before they even get hired. Last but not least, in those 10, you have to have what we call total control. The brother mentioned about those guns that disappear. I was talking to some young sisters a couple years ago from Chicago. They said that the trains, the freight trains that go through Chicago, and y'all hear all the time, all oh, they shooting people in Chicago, 
and this and that, you know, that name Kill Philadelphia is crazy. But in Chicago, they said the freight trains are loaded with weapons and they tell the street organizations what cars to go and get those weapons. Because we don't have no factories in our hood. Just like with the drugs, we don't have, we don't do that. It comes in here, chemical warfare, biological warfare, all this warfare to kill us. So we have to organize every day. I'm going to end by saying this to y'all. Political education is key. I've heard this before. A number of people talked about it. We're going to start some virtual PE classes, but what you can do in your neighborhood, find a storefront, find a church that wants to do that, a community center or community room in the projects. Organize and have speakers come in, have facilitators come in and begin to study. Say coffee ain't just a word. You gotta look back to the past to move forward, find out what the mistakes were. We made a lot of mistakes, but we did do have some victories too. So we like to share that with everyone that's here. Uh, tables over there if you want information how to get in touch with us. And the struggle will continue until we win. And we will win. We, are, we stand on the shoulders of Nat Turner and Harry Tubman and Sojourner Truth and Ella Baker and the names go on and on. Malcolm is in our heart, and that's where the Panther Party came from. And so we're going to be free. We say, free them all! What's the call? What's the call? What's the call? Free them all! Free them all! Free them all! Bring them home. All power to people. Thank you, Shep. I met Shep in New York on my birthday a couple years ago. We was at a, uh, at a, at a celebration and I bought a bunch of buttons because Shep be making them buttons. I got a bunch of buttons and we've been in touch ever since. Now we're going to hear from the brother, the brother that was speaking about his experience just now. We, we got a mic for you right here. We're not going to make him wanna come deal with all of this space. We're just going to let the brother speak some words. I don't know, can you hear me? Yes. Got a little excited listening to y'all today. I spent 15 years up there with a couple brothers that are still there. I got a letter in my pocket that he just sent me this morning. 50 years right up there with Russell. Got Hugh Will. Got Robert Jordan. Got Fred Burton. You got to get, you got to put their names out there right That's right. Wrong. That's right. When you say free them, know who you're talking about. Find out who their families are. Their granddaughters, their daughters, their sons. They're out here. They're struggling with the legacy of their mother or their father. I'm getting carried away. But I ain't saying what I really want to say, man. We got brothers in there, been there all day life, man. I want to know how they feel when they finally see one cop get found guilty for the death of one man. And then the same day, a young lady gets killed down the street, round the corner, in the next city. Somebody here today spoke about it take a certain kind of man or woman to sacrifice that kind of time in their life. All y'all ain't made for it. All of us ain't made for it. Regardless of what you say, don't say what you don't mean, but do what you can. Support the family of the people who spent 50 years in jail, 15 years in jail, five years in jail. If it was about the cause, if it was about our people, then you got to support them too. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you.
So we're going to start wrapping up. We got, we're not going to add any new people to the, to the queue, but we got a couple other people that are going to speak. Wait, did you want to say something? All right, well, we, we can always open it up for another panther. All right, so we're going to... Um, Here we go. You all right on the spear? All power to the people. All power to the people. My name is Brother Pete. I'm from the Washington, D.C. chapter of the Black Panther Party. I want to do a follow-up on Brother Shep. Brother Shep told y'all y'all need to organize. I'm going to take it a step further. You need to organize. You need to mobilize. You need to strategize. But the one thing you better not do is compromise. Yay. I'm a member of the, the original Black Panther Party, but this is not the only organization that's out there for you. Can I have a new Black Panther Party please step forward? Step. I don't know whether they did they leave. Okay, we can have the new Black Panther Party. As, excuse me, brother. You want to do this? Okay. All right. So join an organization. That's the best thing that I can tell you to do. Be a part of something. Don't let the something be a part of you. Okay, please. Please, my name is Tyree. I spent uh, 17 years as a Black Liberation Army prisoner of war. I was with Sonietta. I was with Rap Brown. Uh, I was with all of them. Uh, I was with uh, Herman Bell, Jalil. Um, I was with all of them. But I did the 17 years for shooting three police. That's why I was in jail. Now, my wife's, my wife's father was a Philadelphia police officer. And when I was young, uh, he, he, was a, he was a police officer, but I met him in New York. When my wife, he moved the family to New York. So one day, I saw him, I said, he looked like a pretty uh, get up and go guy. Why was he working in the cleaners? So he said, I used to be a police officer in Philadelphia and they wanted me to give black people nightstick therapy and I refused to do that. And so he quit the force. That's right, he quit the force. And I say that to say, this is the police force they, they want, the ruling class want the police to beat us down because the rulers, they are stacking up money. They are stacking up money the way things are structured. And they don't want to hear no complaints and they don't want to hear no protests. And if there are any complaints or any protests, they're going to pick one person like they pick Momia. Momia is an innocent person. Rap Brown is an innocent person. Uh, Tawana Bradley is an innocent person. They pick one person, and all of you are innocent people. You have not shot the police or beat the police up. All of you are innocent. And they pick Momia to do the things they do to him, and they want him to broadcast it. Matter of fact, when I was in jail, when they would lock, beat me up and lock me down, chain me to the bed, and I would wake up in the morning and the police would come in there with the phone and ask me if I want to call my lawyer. You don't know me because when I was being tortured, I refused to call a lawyer and I refused to call my parents and tell them I was being tortured. Because I, 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 my thing was, I don't work for the government. If you want to terrorize people, you terrorize them and you don't use me as an instrument to do that. You can tell, I, I let them know, you can kill me. That's right, I ain't got no rap for you. No rap for the police. That's why you don't know me. Every time they would beat me up or do whatever they did to me, 
I ain't had no rap for you. They say, you want to call somebody? I said, no, I, I don't want to call nobody. That's why you don't know me. Matter of fact, they killed a the guy in front of me, and they wanted me to help the guy out. And if I would have been there to help him out, very much like Mumia, they was going to charge me not with murder, but charge me with violating his civil rights, which would have made it a federal offense. And when they would have found me guilty, they were going to execute me immediately after the after I was uh, convicted. And then years later, people be saying, well, the evidence showed Tyreek was innocent. That's the way the government is. So uh, the, a brother who spoke earlier, he spoke about uh, Russell, I believe, he spoke about uh, the police energy is like this and our energy goes like that. So we got to do a steady energy thing. I'm happy to speak to all of you as family. All of you are the most dedicated ones, so I'm very happy to speak to you. And so we want to tell, we're going to do a different thing here. The parents, our parents, every parent in a Western society, to be exact, every parent in a Western society have been trained wrong. And so they raise their children wrong. And the wrong is a normal. It's normal for the parents to train their kids the way they do. And the way they train, parents train their children, it turn our people suitable for living in this society who won't rebel. And their, their motto and their mantra is, uh, I'm the adult, you're the child, you obey me. And their other mantra is, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. All of that's got to go. So we're going to use, from now on, revolutionaries are going to be advocating that we tell the parents, that they have to uh, use the modeling method for raising their children, which don't involve making the, making the child obey anything. I see the sister here is telling me I got to go. But that's what, that's what I want to leave with you. So I want to leave you with this, that the parents, all of you out here, tell parents, don't yell at your child, don't beat your child, don't send your child to bed without food, don't lock your child in a closet. If you want your child to do something, uh, you be the example and your child will see what you're doing and the child will imitate what you're doing. That is the, the, red, the revolutionary way and that way will turn out, your, the child will turn out to be a loving person. So I want to say to all of y'all, uh, power to the people and, the and, people. and, and, and the, the brother Wallace, Walter w w Wallace, uh, he was a good person. I could see from his work and I'm very sorry that he uh, lost his life in our situation because he was a good person, you know. So we want to support the Wallace family. We want to know, as I say, that uh, Mumia is innocent and Russell Schultz uh, was doing a good thing to fight against these police who, black and white, they are police and the police are trained to hate us. They are trained to hate us. So, and they are trained to think of black people as animals. And they do it right in the newspaper. My writing explain all of that. But I see the sisters saying I should go. But uh, so power to the people, all power to y'all. And uh, and I want to say, uh, Russell Schultz and and Mumia, they love you for for you being out here, and I love you too. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna be wrapping up really quickly. We want to bring up these brother Taj. We wanted to have a community speak out. It's important for us to make sure that we hear the voices of our community members. So Brother Taj is going to come up and say a quick poem. How you doing, everybody? All power to the people. All power to the people. All power to the people. All right, so I just got a short poem that I wanted to say. Um, I had another poem, but I'm going to keep it quick because I know we got to go. Um, so it's been a while since I had the inspiration to write. I couldn't find the right words to express the plight, the plight that I'm witnessing all my people endure. So I'm in the lab like a scientist producing a cure. The cure for liberation, it ain't easy to reach. I'm trying to give my people hope, it ain't no easy feat. When the hope that they have lies within the bottle, my guys drink it till the pain fills numbs, makes it easy to swallow. Lost boy, lost girl on the treacherous path. Top of the totem pole of society's wrath. Knees all on our necks, makes it hard to breathe. Wake up the next day, my people swinging from trees. Twelve show no mercy when surveilling the streets. Why the judge throw the books, leaving us to make peace. 
How the f can we thrive in society's eyes? Can't even focus on living, all we do is survive. But listen, there's one thing I've learned along the way. You can write your own story if you have something to say. Despite external forces, you can feel alive. Take your time, spread your wings as a collective, and we can learn to fly. The real revolution is within you. Just look inside. Thank you. Thank you, Tosh. Thank you. Michael, right? Now, I'm going to just tell y'all, you know, we, have, we talk about struggle. And sometimes we have to struggle with each other, and we have to struggle through ideas, right? This brother came to me, and he said, you know, I wanted to say something. I wanted to say something that's a little critical, and maybe I shouldn't. I don't know if you welcome that. But, you know, we're not here to censor each other. You know what I mean? Like, I might not agree with what you want to say, but I'm not here to decide who gets to say or what's right and what's wrong as an individual, right? We are a community with different thoughts and we can learn from each other. So, yeah, that, that mic right there is clean. We're going to hear your critical thoughts and process them. And then we're going to close. Sorry, guys. Stage made me nervous. But, uh, and I'm also sorry that y'all got to end on me. And like for the most part, like this is fucking amazing. Thank you, sir. Like for the most part, this is amazing. But uh, like my only criticism is the who keeps a safe mantra that y'all got. Like y'all saying it, like y'all already got it on lock. But as a person who struck, who has like tremendous mental struggles, I have had mental breakdowns in the hood, in my hood and in others. And like, as I'm locked in my mind, as my body is doing whatever the fuck it's once, I can see people who I want to see as my brothers and sisters laughing at me, all right? I don't, and it's surprising. Like the last time which brought me back to reality momentarily was when somebody actually looked at me with Karen and it was so fucking baffling that it actually brought me to. And like, that's ridiculous. <sighs> also, like, like for instance, like the Micaiah Bryant thing. When Micaiah Bryant was fucking murdered, like the situation was actually, you know, right now it's hearsay. But like the, from what I hear, the situation was brought on because her fucking foster mom was calling women to come fucking beat her up because she was unru she was unruly. Sorry, y'all, dude. No, I didn't say it. No, not you. The elder behind you. All right. Her foster mother was calling adults to come handle her because she was, quote, unquote, unruly. For three days, they were berating her, telling her to come outside and fight. So when she finally grabbed that knife, she was in a state of mental crisis. They were going to buy her community. So you can't tell me that we keep us safe. You can tell me that we should keep ourselves safe. But we're not there yet. So don't say it like we have it on lock. But we very much should be working towards it. The first brother who was talking about, like, the plans and the process, like, everything he was saying, like, yes, yeah. He, like, that's the framework to get to there. But we ain't there yet. And, like, as a person who's struggled through it in my hood, and, like, the only thing to bring me out of that fucking, de sorry, out of that was like <clears throat> my willpower and the grace of the goddess. Like, I can't say that we keep us safe yet, but we should. And I would very much like to be a part of the process of us keeping us safe. That's why we want to, that's why we open these microphones up because, you know, that's an important message. Yeah. And you know, when we say we keep us safe, we know we don't have it yet. When we say that, it's manifestation, brother. Brother, I want you to understand that. We are, we are telling ourselves what to do. We are reminding ourselves what we have to do and what we have to be. We don't have it all on lock yet. But we don't get there unless we actually decide to embody that. And that is what that mantra is about. It's not necessarily about what was yesterday or what even necessarily is today. It's about what we are going to make happen. We're going to make it happen. And today is the day that it starts and we are always closer. 
That's why we say, who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. And that is us telling each other whose job it is. It is not somebody else's job to keep us safe. It is our job to do that. So that when you are going through anything, any brother or sister who standing anywhere near you knows that it is their job to keep you safe. We are saying that so that you don't have to go through that. Okay? So when you hear that, you know that that is us calling ourselves into the job of taking care of you. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps us safe? We keep us safe. Who keeps them safe? We keep them safe. Who keeps you safe? We keep them safe. So, so we're going to have two, a couple quick announcements and then we're closing out. All right, peace and blessings, everyone. All right, free them all. Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. All right, thank you all so much. As we all know that this is the month of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, and we are celebrating Ramadan, and we're fasting to those fasting Muslims. We are breaking fast at the Maroon Garden, and we also offer you all to come and to break fast with us and to understand more about Islam and to also understand what is going on with my uncle Russell Maroon Schultz. So I would like for you all to meet at the Maroon Garden. That's at 266-268 South 58th Street. And we will be commencing. We're there now. So if you all would like to go back over to the garden, we'll have all of those things there for you. So thank you all so much. Also, if you want to learn more about Maroon, you can click Linktree. <laughs> You see this scan right here? You can scan Linktree. QR code. Yes, a QR code and all of the information about Maroon, the Maroon Liberation Party, all of those things that we know about Maroon is there. And if you would like to also donate, it's another QR code there. You can donate directly to Maroon. So we thank you all for coming out today. From the cleanup to this rally here, to the march, it was just a very beautiful day. And I'm very humbled and grateful for you all being here. And to Walter Wallace's family, Thank you all so much. It was a pleasure organizing with you. And yeah, thank you so much. And I'm so grateful. And I'm just blessed. And the Schultz family is here to support you. So thank you all so much. Thank you, Sister Yane. I appreciate it. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. I have. I have a zip code prayer in the city. The prayer in the city is the zip code of all the zip codes in the city of Philadelphia. And every morning when you wake up, just put your hand over this and pray to stop the violence, stop all of the nonsense that's happening in our community. So if you want one of the flyers, with the zip codes on it, I'm here to give it to you. We're also doing something on May the 6th at Independence Hall, 6th and Market. And it's called the National Day of Prayer because there is a solution for a whole lot of things. And one of the main things is prayer, fasting, doing a whole lot of other things. So this is one of my solutions. If you want one of the prayer in the city zip code papers to pray over. Just come to me before I leave. Peace and blessings. Good, e good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Asantua Nkuma Ture. I'm an organizer with the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign and the Poor People's Army here in Philadelphia. I want you to get out all your tools and take down this phone number. 215-869-4753. 215-869-4753. We have over 30 families in the city of Philadelphia that now live in takeover houses. 
those houses are those that the city of Philadelphia and or the uh, er, um, housing and urban development have left abandoned for more than three years. People in this city have taken over those houses because housing is a human right. They are living in those houses. Unfortunately, as the weather gets better and warmer, we anticipate the same release that killed Walter Wallace Jr. are gonna come try to evict those families. That must not happen. So we, we ask for your support to be a witness when they try to take over these houses. And we ask for your support with donations of furniture, bedding, dishes, cookware, etc. So stay on alert. And again, that number is 215-869-4753. The Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, the Poor People's Army. Thank you. God bless you. All right, all right. Clap it up, clap it up. So we are bringing this program to a close but we have one more very, very, very important announcement, and I hope I have all of your undivided attention. Do I have your attention? Yeah. Do I have your attention? Yeah. All right. Some of you may be aware that on May 13th, 1985, the city of Philadelphia dropped a bomb on the MOVE headquarters at 6221 Osage Avenue, which is just right up the street. How many of you have heard of what happened on May 13th, 1985? All right. Seven years before that, in 1978, the Philadelphia police had previously attacked the MOVE organization and politically imprisoned nine members of the MOVE family who we all know as the MOVE Nine. They were incarcerated, politically imprisoned, for between 40 and 42 years. Chuck Africa, the last member of the Move 9, was released just last year. You may have also heard that the University of Pennsylvania has been holding, experimenting with, and desecrating the remains of two of the black children, the beautiful babies that were killed on May 13, 1985, Tree Africa and Delicia Africa. Members of the Move family were made to believe that they buried their babies, only to find out that 35, 36 years later, a university, two universities in particular, Penn and Princeton, stole the remains of the MOVE children and have been profiting off of them. Wow. Have you heard of this? So, there's no way that we can allow this to stand. There is no way that we can do anything short of standing with our MOVE family, seeking justice, for the des des desecration, the disregard, the disrespect, the exploitation of the remains of black children who they tested, prodded, without the consent and the knowledge of the family. So I want to invite you all to stand with the MOVE family that for the past 50 years of this existence, has been targeted, murdered, terrorized, and politically incarcerated by the government. They need our support now. Are you ready to stand in support of the MOVE family? Are you ready to stand in support of the MOVE family? All right. So tomorrow morning, just in this corner at the Philadelphia Student Union, tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., the MOVE family will be having a press conference and we want the whole community out. Tomorrow, Monday, 11 a.m., right at the Philadelphia Student Union, we are going to hear from the family, we are going to hear from the parents, and we are going to get our marching orders from the MOVE family. 
And then on Wednesday, we need the entire community to join us at Penn Museum, which is where they were holding and holding hostage these remains on Wednesday at 5.30. And that is at 33rd and Spruce. So again, Monday at 11 a.m., just right here at the corner of Larchwood and 52nd Street, join us and hearing from the Mo family directly. And then we need to see everybody in the street. We need to shut shit down on Penn's campus at 33rd and Spruce so they can hear loud and clear that we won't stop until the remains of Tree and Delisha Africa are returned. We won't stop before there is a full investigation. We won't stop until there is restitution and reparations. What time, Ashe, what time Wednesday? 11 o'clock tomorrow, 5.30 on Wednesday. Let's go. All right, we out? Let's go. We out? Yeah. All right, all right. All right, fam, we're going to close in the way that we close. So we ask everyone to come closer. We can come close together. And we are going to say the words of our sister, Asada Shakur, Another Black Panther who was liberated by a comrade from the Black Liberation Army, Brother Odinga. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We get louder and louder because we are building ourselves stronger and stronger and we are building and lifting our faith and we are building our love and we are building our power. So say it as loud as you can. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support one another. We must love and support one another. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Our chains. Our chains. Our chains. Go in peace, love, and power. Meet somebody, meet a neighbor, meet somebody. We're here because we love each other. Meet someone else who will love you, who loves you and so that you can know that love. Be safe and make sure that you stay away from them pigs. We will see you tomorrow at 11 and on Wednesday at 5.30. Hey. Second and Right away, same day.